you know, you and me really aren't that different. I bet you're going through the exact same thoughts that I went through when I was your age. And if I'm correct, those thoughts revolve around this great desire to be successful. But the problem is you have no idea how to get there. And you don't have someone older in your life that has done the things that you want to do to provide you guidance in this time of uncertainty. And so you're getting random sporadic advices from your parents, from your counselors, from your tutors, from your peers, but you don't understand how legitimate or applicable they are to the career path that you want. Now, I will be speaking to people like me because this is going to be in the format of if I was talking to my younger self, what would be that one piece of advice that I would give him. And me, I knew that I wanted to go to uni. I just didn't know how to set myself up for success in uni and upon graduation, find a job that was fulfilling, that paid a lot. And also, I wanted to be in a position where I had options, right? Unfortunately, I heard a lot of stories where people would graduate and they would be stuck with a job they didn't like because they would apply to 100 jobs and they would only get one offer. They go through the interview process and they realize this job isn't for them, but they still have to go with it because they don't have any other options. I didn't want to be in that position either. So if that's you, if you share all these same sentiments that I did when I was your age, then I think this piece of advice will change your life. And so stay tuned, but I think it's important that I start with my own story of exactly my thought processes and exactly what I did when I was your age. In high school, I was the prototypical high achieving student. I did everything by the book. I did exactly what they told me to do. I took a ton of different AP classes and honors classes and performed well in them. I played sports all throughout. I engaged in numerous clubs and took on leadership roles. I participated in a dual enrollment program my senior year of high school where for half the day I would go to our local college and be a part of their biotechnology lab so that I could develop research skills. And I thought doing all those things was going to cover the bases so that I could perform exceptionally well upon entry into uni and to stand out immediately. But boy, was I wrong. Because those people in my classes did a lot of the things that I did in high school. They took the difficult classes. They did all the extracurriculars because it's not a secret. That's why it's called the prototypical high achieving student. It's typical. But if you think from the perspective of the boards that oversees the really cool projects that happen all throughout a university, they want students that can actually meaningfully contribute to the work. If there's nothing that is unique about you, why would they grant you a role? They wouldn't, right? And so, sure, maybe I took an additional AP class in high school. Maybe I took an additional leadership role. It's really not that far of a gap between me and a different candidate that may have not done that because they can still speak to the other experiences that were very similar. And then at that point, it might be just about how you speak about it, how you present yourself through it. And so the advice that I give to you is the advice that the individuals who immediately got really cool experiences, whether it was work experiences, from companies, whether that was research experience with a professor's lab, whether that was different projects that were happening throughout the university across different schools in our university, they did this. And this is my advice to you. Develop a high value skill that complements your academic credentials. Sounds simple <laughs> because it is right. They had the foresight, whether that was because they had 
additional guidance or that was because they had other resources or they were just smart enough to research it. Kudos to them. A lot of them now are my really good friends, but it's something that nobody really teaches you, right? Because again, when you can bring a high value skill on top of similar academic credentials as someone like me that went above and beyond in that prototypical template, and you bring that to a board member, you have a lot better opportunity to contribute right away, right? And so you have a lot better opportunity to have early experiences that will set you up for better internship positions, for better career opportunities coming out of college. Unfortunately, one of the clips had gotten deleted, but I thought its message was too important for me to ignore. So I'll speak on it now and then we can go into the remainder of the video. And it's about my opinion on college as a whole. And perhaps it's not a popular opinion and doesn't apply if you're in an Ivy League school or school that's top in your field. But for the majority of us, I don't think it matters so much about which school you go to. I know we love to obsess about that. As much as it matters about what you do there, can you take the initiative to gain the experiences necessary to diversify your resume so that you can leverage those experiences for jobs coming out of college, right? I think that is significantly more important. And so one of the experiences that you should certainly be doing right now is doing an internship and internships if you can, right? Having more, the better. And they are so important for three reasons. The first being they get you the experience. You can put it on your resume. You can speak about it. You can talk about the skills and the impacts that you've had there. Fantastic. And you certainly do need that in order for you to be an attractive candidate nowadays. Considering there are so many online resources where people are able to get degrees online, certificates online, the accessibility has increased, meaning the competition has increased. So you need to stand out with the experience. I have so many stories about friends that have excelled in college and then they go and get a job and it's actually heartbreaking where it's this debacle and it can be summarized like this. They'll go into the interview, they'll talk about their academic achievements and they'll talk about their strengths and their weaknesses. And it's a great conversation. My friends are feeling really good about themselves. And then they hit them with, so where's your two and a half years of experience? And you're like, what now? My two and a half years of what? I just told you what I've been doing for the last four years. I did that so that I can get the experience. That's why I'm here, give me the job, right? And then the employer says, oh, actually candidate C has the experience as well. And so we're gonna go that route. And that happens, again, because the competition is so high. There are people that are doing the academics and also getting experience. They are a more attractive candidate. You need to be able to do that yourself. Do an internship for that reason. Number two, you need to figure out your likes and your dislikes. That's just as important, right? As much as it's important to get the experience so the employer likes you, do you like that? That is so important, okay? And people forget that. It's one thing for you to read about a position and to study it, and it's another to live it, to do the day to day. I've done two six month long internships, and in both of them, I had things that I didn't like, and I had things that I really liked, but I would have no clue if I didn't experience it. And so you need to be able to find internships so you know what you're doing, you know what you want to be doing, so you are satisfied for that position when you apply for a permanent role coming out of college. Number three, if you don't do the internships, you will lack a professional network to write you letters of recommendation. And those can literally be the difference between you getting a position and you not getting it. As unfair as that might sound, think about it from the employer standpoint, right? For them to bring you on, they have to allocate resources, meaning they're investing into you. And so if your character is one less thing that they have to worry about, if they got a vote of confidence from a separate manager talking about how great you are, about how great of a contributor and how much energy you bring to the team, then absolutely, they're going to consider it. So 
Having an internship is so important for you to gain the experience so that you can be an attractive candidate, for you to figure out your likes and your dislikes so you're not doing a job that you hate forever. And number three, you need to get a professional network for referrals and for second opinions, right? But how do you get those internships? If you've ever applied for them, you know how difficult it is to get internships because just as much as the job market is competitive, so are internships. And so the way that you need to stand out to get those internship positions is by taking advantage of these opportunities in your university, okay? And we just talked about how you do that. You have a high value skill that complements your academic credentials so that you are able to do meaningful contributions to projects within your school. And so I think it's really important to consider that in the grand scheme of things, there are steps. There really are. And it's unfair that you're not told those steps as clearly as I'm telling you right now. Those steps are you first have to take advantage of what your university offers. Okay. It's a great starting point. You do that by having come into college or in your first two years of college, developing high value skill. And then you use that as you put that onto your resume and you actually have things to talk about. Then that's when you can get internships. And once you get internships, then you've done the three things, right? You've been able to build a really important part of your resume. You've been able to figure out what you like and what you don't like to do. And you've built a professional network. That's how you do it. And then you come out of college and you apply and that's, that's, you're going to be at a great advantage in comparison to those that didn't go through that process. So please take this to heart. It's really important. So what makes a skill high value then? Well, that's a great question. I think there are five important criteria to at least consider that will get you started. Number one, market demand. Do employers or clients actually want this? Number two, transferability. Can this skill transfer across multiple disciplines, industries, roles, so that you have options in the future? Number three, specialized knowledge. Does this skill actually have a barrier of entry so that nobody can just pick it up and replicate your work? Number four, high earning potential. Does this skill people that have an expertise in it command high salaries in the workplace? Number five, relevance. With your understanding of where our society is headed, will this have relevance in the future? And I know you guys want some examples, so I got you covered. I just searched it up and got six of them. Programming software development, cloud computing, data analysis, sales and marketing, graphic design and UI UX design, and content creation. And you can even see there that all of them are so different from one another, right? And if you wanted to do a quick Google search, you could search up the industry that you're interested in and high value skills, and you'll find an ample number of results. And I would actually encourage you to do research on them if you're interested in them, because a lot of times the title doesn't necessarily match exactly what that skill involves. And I don't want you to go full throttle and then realize later on that's not actually what you wanted to be doing. And so do your research. And once you narrow down your choices, take the time. It doesn't have to be across a few days, literally explore for a month or two months, but then hone in on one of them. Because remember, this high value skill that you've selected has a barrier of entry, right? It's something that requires specialized knowledge. That's why it's high value in the first place. So it's going to take a lot of time for you to at least be proficient in it. And that's when you can actually be able to leverage it for cool opportunities in the future. So focus on one of them and it can be the foot in the door so that you can start to explore other skills in the future. But I wouldn't go crazy and do like four different skills at once because I doubt you'll have the time because I'm sure you're still busy as a high school student or your first or second year of uni if you're listening to this. So find one that interests you and go all in on it. Now, I think it's different. I just mentioned you could be in high school or you could be in your first or second year of uni. And so I think the applications of this video are different. If you're in high school, Congratulations, you will have a humongous, humongous head start. And I am highly jealous of your situation. And I wish somebody would have told me this stuff. I would definitely still recommend you take challenging courses, right? And have fun with your clubs and your sports. 
I would just encourage you to be a little bit more mindful when deciding between your fourth AP class and using that time to develop one of those high value skills we just talked about. Because at minimum, you're spending, what, three hours per AP class, per honors class. You spend three hours, four hours a week for the next several years you'll certainly become proficient and you might even become advanced in those skills. And then you can certainly leverage it for really cool opportunities in the future. And so go on Google, search up online resources, start with free courses. And even if you wanted to bring your friend in on this, so you have some extra skin in the game, that's great. Another great source of inspiration and accountability. Um, if you have somebody do it with you. Also, if you're in high school, most likely you will have electives. And if in those elective choices, you have an opportunity to learn more about those high value skills, then that's also a great opportunity because you can just keep all of your learning in school and it's allowing you to benefit from the structured environment. Make use of that, for example, when I was in high school, we had a programming class and boy, do I wish that I took that because if I took that, I would not be struggling so much right now in my programming classes because I started so behind and even in my senior year, I feel behind everyone. And I think that if I had made use of that class, that elective, it would have done me some really great advantages. If you're in college, that's okay. Trust me, I started when I was in college. Immediately make an appointment with your academic advisor and review your plan of study. Ensure that you are taking your required classes, but with your electives, also similar to the high school students, make use of that time and figure out different classes that actually coincide with one of those high value skills that you're interested in. But the goal here is that you're not just taking random classes to fill your credits. That happens a lot, right? Because when you first get into uni, you don't really know what you wanna be doing. And so you randomly just put in things in your future schedule. But now that you have a little bit more clarity and understanding that these internships really matter and to get these internships, you have to have high value skills because it gets you those initial experiences. I would certainly do that. And also, similar to the high school students, make use of online resources, but I would give you an additional challenge to try and start making money off of it. Um, you would be surprised how you can actually make money with these skills. Granted, I don't expect you to make millions of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars a month, but just having a little bit more additional skin in the game um, can really motivate you and keep you further deepening your understanding of that skill. Um, and I would certainly recommend you doing that. So to summarize, take the time to develop a high value skill that complements your academic credentials. And I promise you, it'll serve you a ton of benefits in the future as you look to attain this massive success. If you're like me when I was younger and don't have someone to guide you along this process, I'm more than happy to serve as your big brother, right? And if you want to continue being a part of this family, please subscribe. I also have a guide to academic success that talks about all of this. Additionally, we go over evidence-based learning. We go over how to use your time more effectively. And all in all, it will also aid in you attaining that type of success even as young as you are. So I hope that you can look forward to that. That pre-order will happen at the end of this month, so in two weeks from now, and then the release will be immediately after. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have an incredible day.